Greetings, seekers of knowledge. Today, we dig into the heart of prophecy, beginning with a powerful quote from the Bible. But before we start, please do not forget to support the channel with your likes and comments and subscribe. All new subscribers are welcome. Getting back to our topic. From the book of Isaiah, we hear, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, bear a son, and call his name Emmanuel. And again, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. These verses set the stage for an exploration of the profound prophecy of the mother and the son. Let us journey together to understand this remarkable prophecy. The prophecy of the mother Mary precedes Christ the Son. The scriptures reveal a profound truth in Matthew's words, Mary, of whom was born Jesus, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which, being interpreted, God with us. This prophecy of the mother is a cornerstone in the grand narrative of divine intervention. Mary's role as the mother is not a mere footnote in this tale of salvation. Instead, it is a pivotal point around which the prophecy unfolds. The scriptures paint a vivid picture of a woman chosen to play a crucial part in a divine plan. The significance of Mary's role cannot be understated. She is not just the mother of Jesus, but the one chosen to bring forth the Savior, the Emmanuel, God with us. The prophecy related to Mary is a testament to her importance in this divine narrative. The words from Matthew highlight the magnitude of her role. A virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. This indicates the miraculous nature of Jesus' birth and underscores the divine intervention at play. The prophecy doesn't just herald the coming of the son, but also establishes the mother's role in this divine plan. The prophecy of the mother, Mary, is a testament to her unique role in the divine narrative. It's a prophecy that ties the human and the divine, the earthly and the heavenly, into a cohesive narrative of salvation and redemption. It underscores the significance of Mary as not just the mother of Jesus, but as a figure of profound importance in her own right. Mary's prophecy not only foretells the birth of Jesus, but also establishes her as an integral part of this divine narrative. The prophecy of the mother Mary is a story of divine intervention, miraculous birth, and a woman chosen for a role of immense significance. It's a story that sets the stage for the coming of the son and the fulfillment of a divine plan. The prophecy of the mother Mary is a testament to her unique role in the divine narrative. It's a prophecy that ties the human and the divine, the earthly and the heavenly, into a cohesive narrative of salvation and redemption. It underscores Mary's significance as not just the mother of Jesus, but as a figure of profound importance in her own right. Mary's prophecy not only foretells the birth of Jesus, but also establishes her as an integral part of this divine narrative. The prophecy of the mother, Mary, is a story of divine intervention, miraculous birth, and a woman chosen for a role of immense significance. It's a story that sets the stage for the coming of the Son and the fulfillment of a divine plan. As foretold, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. These words, originating from the book of Isaiah, echo through the centuries, holding a promise of a prophecy that would shape religious history. This prophecy, known as the prophecy of the son, foretells the birth of a unique child, a son. The passage from Isaiah 9 verse 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, is a beacon of hope, a promise of a child who would bring light into the world. The child, as the prophecy foretold, would not be just any child, but a son, a gift to humanity. This prophecy finds its fulfillment in the person of Jesus, as described in the Gospel of Matthew. The birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, during the reign of Herod the king, is a pivotal moment in the fulfillment of this prophecy. The wise men from the east who came to Jerusalem, seeking the one born king of the Jews, were unwitting participants in this divine plan, their journey testament to the unfolding of a prophecy that had been foretold centuries earlier. The significance of Jesus' birth in fulfilling the prophecy cannot be overstated. The arrival of Jesus as foretold by the prophet Isaiah marked a turning point in religious history. The birth of this child, this son, was not a mere event, but a divine intervention, a fulfillment of a promise made by God to humanity. 
In the words of Matthew 2, 1, 2, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Here we see the prophecy coming to life, the words of Isaiah finding their fulfillment in the birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus brings the prophecy of the Son to fulfillment, marking a pivotal moment in religious history. The prophecy of the Son, once a promise, now a reality, set the stage for the unfolding of a new chapter in the divine narrative. Isaiah, the Gospel prophet, foretold the coming of three persons who would represent the heavenly trio. This trio of prophetic figures comprised of Mary, Jesus, and John the Baptist, each symbolizing an integral part of the divine spectrum. Mary, the mother, stands as the earthly embodiment of the heavenly mother of Jesus. Her role is one of significance, as she is the vessel through which divinity enters the world. In the prophecy, her image is a feminine symbol, a testament to the nurturer and the giver of life. She is the initial spark that sets the prophecy in motion, illuminating the path for the arrival of the Son. Jesus, the Son, is the next figure in this prophetic trilogy. He is the direct representation of himself, the Son of God, embodying the divine essence of his Father's person. His arrival in the world is a moment of fulfillment, a testament to the prophecy foretold. He carries with him a message of salvation, a promise of redemption for humanity, and a reflection of divine love and grace. John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, represents the one God known to Israel, the Father. His role is to prepare the way, to ready the hearts and minds of the people for the coming of the Son. He is the voice in the wilderness, the herald of the prophecy, and the bridge between the old and the new. These three figures, each with a prophetic message, played pivotal roles in the unfolding of the prophecy. Mary, with her blessed status, Jesus, with his divine mission, and John the Baptist, with his clarion call, each contributed to the realization of the heavenly trio's representation on earth. They stand as the pillars of the prophecy, their lives intertwined in a divine narrative that transcends time. With each of their arrivals, they brought forth messages for the church and the world, shaping the course of spiritual history. These three figures, each with a prophetic message, played pivotal roles in the unfolding of the prophecy. Both the mother and the son brought forth messages for the church and the world. The messages they delivered were profound and packed with divine wisdom, echoing across the centuries to this day. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, received the divine prophecy of her miraculous birth, she humbly accepted her special role in the divine plan. Her message, as recorded in the book of Luke, states, From henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. This proclamation, delivered in humble acceptance and joy, has indeed come to pass. Mary is revered and praised across generations, her name and story etched in the annals of religious history. Now let's turn our attention to the message of the Son, Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of Matthew, we read of Jesus addressing his disciples on a mountaintop in Galilee. His words were not just a message, but a divine mandate, a great commission. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. This great commission became the foundation of the Christian mission, a call to preach the gospel to all nations. It's a message of love, of unity, of divine authority, and of eternal companionship. Jesus, in his divine wisdom, not just commanded his disciples, but also assured them of his constant presence and guidance. These messages, delivered by the mother and the son, continue to resonate through the ages. They inspire faith, guide spiritual journeys, and continue to shape the narrative of Christianity. From a humble proclamation of a blessed woman to the divine mandate of the Son of God, these messages form the bedrock of the Christian faith, echoing through time and space, etching a divine path for all to follow. In the prophecy, the mother and the son share a unique unity. This unity is beautifully encapsulated in the words of Mark chapter 10, verses 6 and 8, where it is said, God made them male and female, and they twain shall be one flesh, so then they are no more twain, but one flesh. This profound statement, they twain shall be one flesh, 
is a testament to the deep bond and unity between Mary, the mother, and Jesus, her son. This unity is not merely physical, born of flesh and blood, but also spiritual, binding them together in prophecy and purpose. It's a unity that transcends the earthly plane, touching the divine. The prophecy foretold that a woman, a virgin, would conceive and bear a son, a child destined for greatness. This child, named Jesus, would be called the Son of the Highest, a clear indication of his divine origin and purpose. Yet in the prophecy, Mary is not merely a vessel for the birth of Jesus. She is an integral figure, chosen and blessed among women. She is the one who brings forth the Son, the one who ushers in the prophecy's fulfillment. The prophecy, therefore, is as much about Mary as it is about Jesus. They are intertwined, two halves of a divine whole, bound by prophecy and purpose. And it is this unity, this deep divine connection between the mother and the son, that adds another layer of depth to the prophecy. It's a bond that defies simple definitions, one that reaches beyond the physical into the spiritual, the prophetic, and the divine. It's a bond born of faith, of divine purpose, and of prophecy. It's a bond that, in its unity, reflects the divine plan and purpose of the prophecy. This unique unity between the mother and the son adds another layer of depth to the prophecy. It is not merely about the coming of a savior, but also about the unity of purpose, the unity of faith, and the unity of love between a mother and her son, between Mary and Jesus. The prophecy finds its culmination in the birth of Jesus as foretold. The ancient words of the prophet Isaiah echo down the centuries, reaching their fulfillment in a humble setting in a city known as Nazareth of Galilee. Here, an angel descended from the heavenly realms, carrying a message that would change the course of history. Gabriel, the angel, was sent to a virgin named Mary, espoused to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The angel greeted Mary with words of divine favor. Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. A greeting that would set the stage for the fulfillment of the prophecy foretold by Isaiah. The angel then comforted Mary, telling her not to fear, for she had found favor with God. It was then that the angel revealed the divine plan. Mary would conceive, and she would bring forth a son. This son was to be named Jesus. The angel proclaimed, He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. These words echoed the ancient prophecy of Isaiah, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. This culminating event, the birth of Jesus, was not just a fulfillment of prophecy, but a moment of divine significance. It was a milestone in the grand narrative of redemption, a beacon of hope for all of humanity. The birth of Jesus represented the unity of the divine and the human, a testament to God's love for the world. Yet, it also held a promise. The words of the angel to Mary hinted at a future yet to be realized, a reign yet to be established, a throne yet to be ascended. With the birth of Jesus, the prophecy of the mother and the son reaches its fulfillment, yet holds promises for the future. As we draw our journey to a close, let us summarize the prophecy of the mother and the son. We've journeyed through the annals of biblical history, delving deep into the prophecies of Isaiah and their fulfillment in the New Testament. Central to these prophecies were the figures of Mary, the mother, and Jesus, her son, who came to embody the heavenly trio on earth. Our exploration began with the prophecy of the mother, Mary, foretold centuries before her birth. As the virgin who would conceive and bear a son, her prophecy was a significant precursor to the prophecy of Christ. She came to symbolize a heavenly mother, becoming an image of divine femininity, and it was foretold that all generations would call her blessed. Following this, we delved into the prophecy of the son, Jesus Christ. Foreseen as a child to be born and a son to be given, Jesus represented himself, the Son of God, who was the express image of his Father's person. The fulfillment of this prophecy marked a significant event in biblical history, with Jesus' birth signifying the arrival of the King of the Jews. We also discussed the unity between the mother and the son. The prophecy beautifully illustrated the divine connection between Mary and Jesus, reflecting the biblical principle of two becoming one. This unique bond between a mother and child was emblematically represented in Mary and Jesus, where they twain were truly one flesh. The prophecy's fulfillment was yet another area we explored. 
The birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, as foretold, brought the prophecy to life, and yet a part of it remains unfulfilled. The prophecy that Jesus would take the throne of his father David to rule is a future event awaiting realization in the latter days. In conclusion, the prophecy of the mother and the son holds immense significance within biblical literature. It provides a profound understanding of the divine plan and the pivotal roles that Mary and Jesus played within it. The prophecy not only foretold their earthly lives, but also offered a deeper spiritual understanding of their heavenly representations. As we continue to explore and understand, the prophecy of the mother and the son continues to offer profound insights and lessons. Until next time, keep seeking knowledge and understanding.